All right, now let's look at the pineapple as a fruit. The pineapple fruit obviously is mainly grown in places like Hawaii, um, tropical areas. That's where we normally get our fruit here stateside for pineapples. But the actuality is that this particular pineapple came from Mexico. So I guess for most of us here uh, in North America, this is where we get our pineapples from. Now, in order to process or to get our pineapple ready, you're only going to need two things. In addition to the pineapple, we highly suggest that you use a cutting board whenever you're dealing with pineapples because they are very juicy, especially when they're ripe. So this helps catch and control the juice. And then you need a really good knife, a sharp knife. Now, before we actually make that pineapple, let me tell you one of the reasons why you want to eat pineapple. Pineapple pretty much has every vitamin in it except vitamin E. Now, again, it has it in varying degrees and sources, but when you think about that whole A to zinc idea, pretty much all of them are packed into these little precious pouches, except vitamin E. And then, of course, a few others, but overall, it's high in vitamins. Now, another thing that makes the pineapple so special is that in addition to the vitamins in it, it has enzymes. Now, enzymes are great, right? And all their fruits and vegetables, because they're what make whatever we eat actually be alive. But here's the thing with the enzyme that's in here. It's actually a uh, enzymatic protein or a protease. That matters, one, because it's good, but it also matters because that might be what's irritating some of you when you eat pineapple. If you've ever eaten pineapple before, one of the complaints that people have, really probably the only complaint that you'll get, is that when you eat it, it kind of tingles or even burns your tongue or your mouth. What you're feeling is the effects of that protease or that enzymatic protein. It's called bromelain. Bromelain. Don't, don't, don't hurt me, bro. Well, that's what's happening when you eat the pineapple if it burns your mouth, that bromelain. And why is it irritating, but it's not a game ender? It's not, it's not really bad. That enzymatic protein, by definition, is an enzyme that breaks down proteins. It's a protein that breaks down other proteins. Now, that can be irritating because when you eat it and it breaks down the protein, that means it's really affecting that lining on your tongue and in your mouth. So your skin or your, the tongue surface might feel a little raw because the enzymes are actually breaking it down. Now, we're going to tell you how to minimize that in a couple of tips from here. But you shouldn't let that be the reason why you don't eat it, because that same effect that it has on the mouth or on the, on the tongue is actually what it's doing for us when we eat the pineapple. That bromelain is helping our digestion. So it's great for those who have digestive issues. It's great for those who may be trying to balance out their gut flora. It works with the body to have that good breakdown of those things that we don't need and those toxins in our bodies. Another thing about that bromelain too is that it's also an anti-inflammatory. So in the same way that we might get that buildup of lactic acid in the joints or the soreness in our muscles, it's or just inflammation, period, because our body is dealing with some infection or situation somewhere. This is an anti-inflammatory. It helps reduce the symptoms and also fights the cause by nature of those enzymatic proteins. Not only that, the antioxidants in pineapple make it a go-to because those antioxidants, again, they help anti-age, but they also fight cancer cells. And it's been proven in a few studies how this is an anti-cancer food. So really, when you think of the negative, which may be a little tingle or burn in the mouth temporarily, and then all of the positives, that's why we want to make sure that we have pineapple as often as we can get it. It's best to eat in the warmer months, in the summer months. One of the things that I learned in my naturopathic studies is how just like there's seasons that we have to deal with those seasons in our bodies. And not all food should be, could be consumed all year long. When I say foods, I mean specifically seasonal fruits and vegetables. So when you think about the best time to eat these, it's in those summer months, which is where we're having to be heading now. It's about springtime that we're actually airing this. So what I'm going to do by God's grace is show you usually the conventional way, but then kind of an unconventional way that you can eat a pineapple. Now, the big thing when you're getting a pineapple, if you look at this pineapple here, uh, if I had to give you two color choices, green or yellow, which color do you see dominant? in this pineapple. And I think it's fair to say, I hope you can see, depending on the camera, you should see mostly yellow. This is what lets you know that this pineapple is ripe. Most of the pineapples in the store, you say, well, Chris, they're green in the store. Well, that's a commercial move because they don't want the pineapples to rot. They normally will pick them way before they reach their ripening. And so when you see them there on the shelf, they're hard, 
they're green, they're, they're safe to eat, but they're not at their optimal level of nutrition. They're not ripened. And so what you want to do is when you get that pineapple, if you can hold out, usually if you wait about a week or so, uh, if you put that pineapple in not a wet place, but what we usually do is we get the pineapple and we just put it on top of the refrigerator. You don't necessarily put it in a dark place unless you really, really want to get it to ripen fast. That's the normal trick. You want something to ripen, put it in a dark place where it's not super hot, no wet, but you want it to be uh, warm, lukewarm, so that it allows those bacteria to get in there, break down, start creating those sugars, start doing their thing, and that fruit or vegetable will ripen up a lot quicker than if you just sit it on the counter or if you put it in the fridge. So we waited about three or four days. This was actually given to us. Praise the Lord. Thank you so much, Sister Minnie, for blessing us with this pineapple. And this is why we're going to process it and show you how to eat it today. In addition to looking for it to be yellow, to know when it's ripe, another trick that you can use is all the pineapples, right? They have these leaves on top. Now, they are sharp. While I was talking, I don't know if you saw that in the beginning, I was sitting there talking right in my mouth and I picked one of these and they actually stuck into my skin. And I think I played it off pretty good. Here's the thorn right here. And I was able to pick it out. Now, one of the ways you can know if it's right, if you take these leaves that are kind of in the middle of the stem here, if you can take two fingers and kind of, you know, nestle it out like this, that's letting you know that it's right. The ones that are green or unripe, they're really fibrous, right? Because there's not a lot of sugar, not as much juice. So they're hard. It's hard to take this leaf out. So if you can take the leaf out, that's your second cue that, okay, this pineapple's uh, ready to come to the party in my tummy. All right. So we're ready to get started. Got a nice yellow color. I was able to take one of these middle leaves out without too much resistance. So now here's what we're going to do. When you have the pineapple, we're going to try the unconventional way, right? The unconventional way. You may see some of these videos floating around on the web to where you actually can cut into these divots on the side of the pineapple and eat the pineapple piece by piece. So I'm going to try that this way. And what I'm going to do is I'm kind of cutting in a, uh, a zigzag formation like this, right? So I'm going to try and zigzag around this pineapple, going around the divots that are naturally in it. And what should end up happening is when you go around this crown of the top of the pineapple, we should get kind of a zigzag looking uh, top to remove the stem. All right, so I think I'm all the way around pretty much, okay? So now I'm going to take our cutting board and I'm just gonna try and pull off and I'm pulling off here and that's how it looks from the top. Now on this stem, this is how my stem looks. So it kind of has like a, a star shape, all right? has these stars around the side. And then on the top of the pineapple, here you have these chunk pieces. This dark brown stuff is the skin. The skin is absolutely unedible. You can't juice it, you can't smoothie it. Do not eat this skin. It's kind of like coconut skin with these tropical fruits. They're made to be protected. And so God put these layers around here to protect them. And you don't have to worry about eating those because you got plenty of vitamins, antioxidants, and those enzymatic proteins all in the meat. In the middle of the pineapple, that's the core. This is how the core looks on the top. This is how the core looks on the bottom. This is where that bromelain is most highly stored. So the good news is that usually you don't want to eat the core. Um, now, if you're making a smoothie, you got a high quality processor, you can put that core in there and, and work with it. But that's where a lot of that bromelain is going to be. And if you know that that has issues or irritating your mouth, let me give you a couple more tips how you can reduce that too. You're going to eat the meat around the core which is gonna be lower in that bromelain that you want. Remember, we want that inside, but we don't want it to burn. And so that's a big issue because everybody's mouth is different. You wanna make sure you don't eat the core. You're gonna cut that out or pick around that. Now, another thing that you can do, even if you say, well, I just want the pineapple, but the bromelain is just too much for me. What you can do is you can actually take the pineapple, you can slice it, you're gonna, I'm gonna show you how to skin it here in a second, and you can take the meat and put it in salt water just regular table salt, not pink Himalayan. You just want a nice sodium chloride table salt and put that in there for about a minute or so. And then once you've let that pineapple soak, you want to take it out and you want to quickly, you know, loosely rinse it. Or you don't want any salt in your pineapple, right? That's not what we want. 
but that helps draw out some of that bromelain protein and it won't as irritate the mouth as much, but you still get that sweet, good flavor that you want in a pineapple, okay? So that's another tip if that's a big deal. So let's go for it. We're going all in saying, hey, I want this because that's what he put in there. I'm willing to deal with a little irritation because that's just your body's way of letting you know too not to eat too much of this. See, the creator is wise because there's so much sugar. This is a very sweet fruit to prevent us from gorging on it. That's one of the reasons why I think he put that bromelain in it to kind of balance it out. So when we get that too much tingle, that's when we know to back off and we are enjoyed, we're satiated. We don't have to eat too much and we eat some later, right? So now with the pineapple, we've got our zigzag shape cut in. What you can do is if you take your finger and if the pineapple is right, if you tuck it under into one of these sides, which is what I, I just did it here, but I'm gonna bring it around so you can see me do it. And here you can just take the pineapple out and you can eat it by your hand. I know that sounds bad. You may have heard that on the mic. But well, the reason why I'm sucking when I'm eating it because I don't want the juice running down my arms. I'm not wearing it as lotion. I want all that juice inside. So if you enter in a situation, I don't have any knives, I don't have any forks. If you cut it with this zigzag top, you can literally take your finger, and I can't get leverage when I'm looking around this way, but I'm taking my thumb, I'm gonna come around this side. Take your thumb, here are those uh, circles or divots in the side. Just take your thumb, push it up under there, <laughs> I'm going to pitch a hard one. And it just comes right out, right? So I don't have nails. So you got nails? Maybe a little bit easier for you to do. But I don't have nails. You don't need nails. Pineapple's an equal opportunity snack. I don't have any nails. And I'm not using a lot of strength. It's a Sabbath, right? <laughs> so mm, I'm just enjoying this. Let me do it one more time. I'm trying to pretend like I'm showing you. I'm just eating the pineapple. Again, find that divot right in here. That V shape right here. Take your finger. Grab it on that side. And remember, this is not going to work if that pineapple is green. If it's not right, you're going to break your finger. So don't, <laughs> so don't write me. Chris, I broke my finger eating pineapple. Mm -mm. I told you to wait till it got right. Wait till it gets right. And it'll come out. This is really fun. Now, it's going to get messy, right? So it's cool to eat like that outside on a picnic. It'll be fun to let your children, you know, you might want to help them out if they're really young. Cut a few divots for them so it's a little bit easier. And what you're doing is you're literally picking the meat around that core. Already I can feel the bromelain working in my mouth, but because I'm not eating the core and you're eating around that core and just plucking it off, nice chunks, it's not, it's not a game breaker. You know, it's just letting me know that it's working. I'm going to get one more before I cut this thing the conventional way. Now we're going to do it the conventional way, the traditional way. Mmm, fun. Now, the conventional way to do it, because once you kind of go conventional, it's hard to do the, uh, the cool, fun way. Rather than having this zigzag top, let's pretend I had the top on the pineapple. And we're doing this the conventional way, the orthodox way. I would simply take the pineapple, put it on one side. And with one hand, you hold the pineapple. And with the other hand, you just slice straight through. You're going to slice straight through. And this is going to end up evening out our top. And we lose our fun, playful zigzag top. But we have the nice, smooth, conventional top. All taste the same but it's just another way to eat it. So here's how it looks when we cut it straight through. What's the high bromelain content? Right there in the center, that core. In fact, if you take the knife, it's tough, it's fibrous, it's really not ideal to eat. So when I go to cut this, I'm gonna cut a slice. I could have skinned it in advance, but I tend to like to pick up the pineapple Let's say your son said, I don't want to get my hands dirty. I'm having a dinner party or whatever, lunch party, and I don't want people you know, with getting their hands dirty. All you'd have to do is skin it. In order to skin it, you're going to go through here, and I've gone halfway through that slice. This is that core center, so you could do it a couple of ways. I could take the center out by just cutting around it. 
Now I've got this pretty U shape and now I'm here on our cutting board and I'm just cutting slices that end up like this, right? But remember, you can go with the skin or to go without the skin. All you wanna do is just walk around the edges and we're cutting off our skin on the edge because that's not edible there. And then we were going to cut through that core. We're getting rid of the core. So now all we have left is this smiley face, right? And with this smiley face, I'm just gonna go ahead, cut a few chunks. So whether I have the skin or whether it is skinless, this is the meat that the Lord intended for us to eat. No animal, no fowl, no beast was harmed in the making of this video. But the only beast that you see was help. And that's our body. Now, because I cut away the core, that bromelain contents down. And because it's ripe, no burn, no irritation. So the way you do something, the way you eat something has a big deal or has a big impact on how it's going to taste. So if you haven't had good pineapple or you don't enjoy it, it may not be the pineapple's fault. It just may be the way that you had it prepared. So we've shown you how to eat the pineapple in the conventional way. And then we've even shown you how to play with it in the unconventional way. And I'm gonna save this piece. I'm sure the girls would like. Now, if I actually have this big chunk, I can just literally take it and hmm, walk around, talk, have fun, break off the divots and literally eat it with my own hand. Pretty cool. And now, if you look here at this piece that's left, here is the core. Here's the core right here. And it's tough. It's not rock hard. It's not like a peach pit or nectarine pit, but it's tough. And that's where that bromelain is locked in. But then all of this good meat right here is there for the taking. A good pineapple, usually on a good sale, should probably cost you anywhere from no more than two bucks a piece. But sometimes you can find them on a special for like a dollar a piece. It's an affordable route. It's good to eat in a big group. You got a big family, a lot of children. It's a good thing for them to have and to enjoy. Usually lasts probably a good week. If you put it in the refrigerator, remember once you put it in the refrigerator, it's gonna slow down the ripening process, which slows down um, its deterioration and it should last. When you see it starting to turn brown, that's usually the color that's letting you know it's time to move on or hurry up and eat me. But otherwise than that, this is the color we're looking for. We're not looking for that bright white color. You want a deep golden rich color on just your standard pineapple. I know that there are videos out there. People who got the chance to go to Hawaii have gone to the Dole Farm. You can check those out. They're all, they're many different kinds, but this is our standard American pineapple in the grocery store. And it's not organic, unfortunately, but you can get them in both uh, directions. But this is how you can eat it and enjoy it. Again, it's power packed with those vitamins. It has an enzymatic protein that's not in a lot of other fruits. So you can enjoy this to help supplement, mix up your fruit diet. Because a lot of people, that's what they complain about. All I eat is oranges or all I eat are apples. This is where now in the season of the spring and summers, you want to work in pineapple every other week or so. And working this into your diet will help with your digestion, reduce that inflammation, lots of antioxidants, even cancer fighting properties, which are virus fighting uh, properties as well. This is the time to eat. That's why we do change health in the kitchen. We don't just do it in the kitchen because we're cooking. You might recall last week, we went through the MMWR, the Morbidity and Mortality Weekly Report from the CDC. There was a reason why we did that in the kitchen because we've got to start looking at the kitchen counter, the kitchen table, what we put on that table as our medicine. That is what, it, not just in a time of a, a pandemic, not just in a time of a pandemic, but in a time of peace, because God gave us this fruit from the very beginning in a perfect world. And it's the closest thing that we have to manna, to heaven food, its fruits and its vegetables. That's the very center of being new, right? New, that E, it's buffeted by nutrition, exercise, water, and rest. It starts with how we're eating. So when you think about if you're sick or when you think about when you're not feeling well, the very first thing you need to think about is not how many pills I have in the medicine cabinet. It's not, do I have health insurance? 
It's not let me call the doctor. The first thing you need to think about is what am I putting on my table? Because whatever you're putting on your table is what you're putting in your body. And whatever is in your body is what's going into your mind. And ultimately, whatever you're putting into your mind, that's what's going into your soul. So let's build right. And let's realize that just like we eat our way into a hospital bed, you can eat your way out of it. You can eat your way out of the grave. If you've got one foot in it, you can eat the other one out of it. And you can be whole by the grace of God, always by the grace of God. But let's cooperate. This pineapple is one way to do that. And I hope you feel empowered and encouraged. I am I'm wanting to eat all this pineapple now, but I know we got to go on with our worship. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to stop here. If you got a comment, you got a question, make sure you send it in and we'll address it when we have our study this afternoon. But more than anything, enjoy what God has given you. And one of the things he's given us is health. So now.